And welcome back to the Morning Blend. One in seven women get postpartum depression or another perinatal mood or anxiety disorder. Being pregnant and having a baby is usually filled with joy and anticipation, but being sad, overwhelmed, and anxious can also happen, and it is not something moms should feel ashamed about. That's our message today. The Moms Mental Health Initiative is here to help and offer resources. Sarah Bloomquist is the founder. She is here with uh, Emily Alexie from Postpartum Support International, the Wisconsin chapter. Great to see both of you ladies. Thank you for Thank having you us. so much. So after my first daughter was born, I experienced postpartum depression. I think everybody in my family thought I might be a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. Just crying all the time. And it was like, I was so excited to have a baby, my first, and I was like, what is the matter with me? Right, right. Well, you're not alone in that. We um, are seeing, um, more and more women kind of coming out of the the um, framework and letting um, their stories be heard, which is unusual because um, there's so much shame and stigma. So for these women like you who share their story, we're um, just so thankful for their bravery and their courage to um, really share how horrible and agonizing this disease can be when it's supposed to be the most happiest time in your life. And that's, I want to get to why the shame, but one of the things I want to say for the purposes of definition is this perinatal mental illness. And I, I was doing some reading before you were here and I appreciate it because I've always heard it referred to as postpartum depression, which right. refers to after the baby's born. But this idea of perinatal and this, this idea of your hormones being out of whack and struggling with mental health mm -hmm. issues, is can be before the baby's born, it can be during the process, it can be after, and it can be quite extended right. depending on your own body and your own mental health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, around 20% um, begin in their pregnancy feeling, you know, depression or anxiety. Actually, anxiety is more common, mm -hmm. or at least that's what we see it presenting itself a little bit more. Um, and it can begin anytime during pregnancy up to a year postpartum. I want to talk th about the shame part because I thought my hospital, my doctor, the nurses around me did a great job of saying, oh, you might not be, you might be feeling blue after you have the baby and were very, and checked in on me. I got a mm -hmm. call from the hospital. My doctor asked me about it, mm -hmm. but I still felt, I guess, some shame about it because mm -hmm. for one, I thought, well, I'm educated. I know about it and I'm really happy about this. I have a, you know, a lot, a good support system around me. Mm -hmm. Why is it that so many women feel shameful about this? I think it's exactly what you were saying that it's supposed to be this happy, wonderful time. And you see other moms on TV or on social media or wherever, and everybody looks like they're doing great. And so if you're really struggling, if you're having a really hard time, you're feeling super anxious, intrusive thoughts, or just sadness, it's really, really hard to kind of speak out and be like, no, nope, I'm not okay. Yeah, why is it so hard for us to find the help we need? I don't get that part either because, and maybe some of it's a shame. Well, absolutely, some of it's the shame, just yeah. the reaching out aspect. But once you reach out, we don't have a consistency of care in our medical communities on how to address this. So the question is, well, who's patient is the mom if this is postpartum is it still the OB's responsibility is it her primary's responsibility and then we're seeing a shortage of psychiatry um, psychiatrists in the field and so then moms are asked to wait months to be seen um, and oftentimes it's like here make a call and the mom doesn't have the breadth or the um, jargon or um, really just the energy to make that call. I was going to say the energy yeah. because you're tired anyway, especially if it's a first, but or if it's multiple, you're just so exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a part of what plays into why it kind of takes a hold on you. You mentioned psychiatric care, psychologists. The thing I hear from people is it's like everybody's on a network and a lot of people mm -hmm. can't afford quality exactly. mental health care. It's like, it seems like anybody that you call and people will talk about this, you gotta pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars out of pocket. Right, and it's, it's really a crisis at this point um, because a lot of insurance companies aren't reimbursing providers and then they don't want to get on insurance panels and then moms are asked to pay out of pocket. And what we know about, we call them PMADs, perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, is it does not discriminate. And we're seeing close to one in five, one in four for lower socioeconomic um, families. And um, it's so prevalent, yet um, there's just a really 
uh, poor, there's a poor response to these moms. And so um, asking them to pay out of pocket, asking them to just even get to their appointments. Um, and then you're also dealing with some really severe symptoms mm -hmm. that can be paralyzing. Um, they can have very scary aspects to them. And then once they do speak out, you can have a provider who doesn't respond appropriately and causes more harm than good. Are you glad you shared your story? Oh, yes. But it took a while to share some of the details of my story because of that shame. And um, I've experienced it twice. Um, and it hit me in different ways both times, even when I was prepared the second time. Um, and like you, I'm like, I'm educated, I know mm -hmm. about this, but it was still so hard for me to get the right help. We ran out of time, you wanted to say one other thing? Well, it's just um, to kind of piggyback on what Sarah said, that I think the response from a provider is so important. If a mom kind of finally gets up the energy to call and kind of gets shut down by whoever answers the phone, she's not gonna ask for help again. Yeah, so the people around new moms need to ask, whether your family, your doctor, your nurse, wherever you're involved with them, yeah, cool. you need to check in with them, I think. It's such great information. I appreciate you sharing your story. Thank you so much for being here. We didn't get to a lot of details about it, but you've got this wonderful walk 2019 coming out. It's Climb Out of the Darkness. It's happening on Saturday, September 21st at 10 a.m. It's at the Womb Room MKE, which is located at West National Avenue. Maybe that's where the walk kicks mm -hmm. off. Is yeah. what, what you're saying. If you go to facebook.com <clears throat> slash C-O-T-D-M-K-E 2019, you can find out more, register, get more details about it. A great way to support organizations that um, help provide care and resources for moms who are struggling. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Great to talk to you. Thank Appreciate you so much. it.